Uh, you know, I begin today, I kind of back in the Old Testament a little bit. I know the old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. We can talk about that in our conversion of life. And we mentioned about some of the things. But let me remind you that this altar is open at all times. There's no certain time schedule for people. They feel like they come, they need to be here, pray about something. That's what it's for. It's the freedom of life. As one mentioned today about all the several people sometimes that attend church and you don't know their names or who they are. You know, fellowship is important. Uh, fellowship with friends is not to be forsaken. And in time past, we find that sometimes people just forsake one another and somewhere along the line, you begin to forsake the Lord, forsake your duties and calls. And as you all know, I'm not much of a, I'm not one to browbeat people for coming to church or not coming to church. I said this, if they show up one Easter Sunday of the year, thank God for them. That's the way I see it. When God calls, though, we need to listen because we can be drawn away of our own desires of life. So let's look back all the way to Joshua. Way back, I think it's the sixth Bible uh, in, uh, in the Bible of the Old Testament, and Joshua. And Joshua, now that Moses has died, Joshua is the one who is to continue to lead the children, the chosen people of Israel. I know some people say they're not chosen and that land, but I know that God promised that land to Israel that wherever Joshua's foot set upon that land, it would belong to them. Now, when I get back, I'll get over into Joshua chapter 5, 6, 7 a little bit, mostly in chapter 7. And I want to mention something about a lie because we know that if we lie, we are of the devil. The Bible is saying, and the Bible makes it clear what a bare-faced lie is. He that denies Christ as the Son of God is a liar, and the devil is a liar and the father of it. Now, I'm not justifying what they say, a little white lie. Nobody here has ever told one, right? I didn't see any hands go up. I like to kind of get to everybody a little bit now and then. What about a lie? Well, Joshua is now going to cross the River Jordan. And Joshua sends two spies, remember that story? To a place to search out the city of Jericho. And you'll get the point. And in Jericho, he goes to this woman's house. Do you know who she was? Rahab. You know what she did? She was a harlot, right? So when the king finds out that the Joshua sent these spies, or there's two spies in the city, they go to find out where they are. Now bear with me a little bit because we see now that they go and they ask Rahab where the spies are. Where are these spies? Rahab, think about this, who had already told the spies, we know God sent you, we know what you've done in the past, how that Joshua and all these armies of God have overtaken all the kings and all the enemies that have worshipped idolatry, have had false gods and false beliefs. She says, if you'll spare me, when Joshua comes, when your armies come to take Jericho, please spare me. Please just tell me you'll spare me. And the spy says, you say it, we'll do it. You hide us, and we'll spare you. Now think about this. Did she lie? When the spies came to Rahab, when the spies came and asked or not the spies, but when the, when the people of Jericho came and asked her where they were, she had them hidden on the rooftop under the stalks of corn or whatever. Now think about this. Now she says to them, they're gone. 
if you hurry up and chase after them, and you try to get them very quickly, you might be able to catch them. Did she lie? Did she lie? This is yes, this is no. <laughs> Thank you. I do pick them. But I mean, you ought to hear when they get them wet. Now, here's my point. Let's put ourselves in the condition here. You know that someone is totally innocent. Let's look back to the Nazi times. Let's look back to when people actually hid the Jews, right? They tried to save some of their lives, right? And back to slavery. We look back to slavery when people tried to hide the slaves so that they wouldn't be murdered or cruel, right? If you know an, a person, an individual is innocent, and you've got them hidden, maybe your family member, maybe a close friend, and someone comes to brutally take them or to take their lives as they would the spies, and they said, do you know where John or Jim or Sarah or someone is, and they're under your bed? You know they didn't do what they said they were accused of. What would you do? Lie. Didn't take it. <laughs> 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 I love this place. Don't hold back, Mom. <laughs> That's why you ain't in jail, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she'd be the first one to call. <laughs> so let me get to the place of being judgmental. Or not judgmental. Sometimes we're quick to judge others. Sometimes we're very quick. Don't get me wrong. And I hope this message doesn't stir you up in the wrong idea that it's okay to lie or that it's wrong or right. What I'm saying is in this time, in this process of time, many things happen in life that go wrong but turn out to go right. Many times in life, we seem like it's happened this bad. I'm sorry or I'm ashamed or I shouldn't have done it. But in the long run, as we learn about the past of the people being deceived, lied to, and all these things, when we learn about other people and we learn what is right and righteous thing to do, then we go on to set a future of life that we can live forever in the kingdom of God. All these experiences that we go through in our past life is a learning process but there's going to come a time when you need to make a choice in your life of right and wrong. What you believe and what you don't believe. This whole freedom of life is about choice. Choose, Joshua said, choose this day whom ye serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the spies went back to Joshua. And along with all these things that are said and done, when they took the city of Jericho and they came and they destroyed the city of Jericho, there was Rahab, her mother, her father, the whole family was saved by a small scarlet ribbon that hung in the window. A promise made is a promise to be kept. I promise. Sometimes we just seem to think, I promise, and it doesn't mean anything. Or so I tell you the truth. Jesus Christ never lied. He never had to lie about anything. You see, sometimes people get in a situation, they have to lie because they've done wrong. Remember, Rahab's a horrible. I don't think a lie was hard for her to come. But Rahab was still saved from all the destruction because she believed God. That's where it comes down to. She believed the people that God had sent that would come to destroy Jericho. She believed the past of what she had heard of Moses crossing the Red Sea. Joshua was going to cross the River of Jordan. She believed all these things. And that's what I ask you. Do you believe something out in the world, another organization that's coming up, 
Or do you believe beginning in Genesis right up to the end of Revelation? What do you believe? God is true and every man a liar. The past of life of what he's saying in this biblical time, whether it be Joshua, so he sets the table for the birth of Jesus Christ. I hear now that people believe an uh, uh, individual priest the other night said, now they've not only got Jesus coming back three times, he's coming back four times. The Bible states very clear. He's coming back the second time without sin and the salvation. That we live this life that it's not just a better way, but it's the best. This is the way life is. It's easier to stay out of trouble than get out of trouble. God sets a plan for us to be free. And what he's made free is free indeed. The church is not set here on an organization of, of time, an organization of you do this and you do that. What God's made free is free indeed. Stand, praise the Lord, ask the Lord. You can come to church or not come to church. You can pray or not pray. But God said, as Joshua did, choose this day whom you serve. As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. We hear about people bringing things in or doing different things. Look, it's my place to preach and to tell the truth. When this Bible is set aside and we conform to the so many things that people want to do and say, it's okay, it's not that way. The truth is what's going to set you free. A simple prayer of forgiveness can give you the hope of eternal life. A simple coming to God and saying, whatever my past was, it couldn't be as bad as his or hers, or maybe I never was as good as an individual. But if you can forgive me, if you forgive me my sins, then you can put the old things away. Behold, all things, all old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. You begin to hear a bird different when it sings in the truth. You begin to see the world differently. You'll feel sorry for an ant sometimes when it might be on your hand. And you... There's a change in your life. You'll see the humbleness and the kindness, not just for yourself, but for others. We have a compassion for others because we were there. We were lost. We were all sinners. We were all born in sin. No respect to person. But we find deep down inside, what do we lose? Well, for one thing, the lesson, some people may have lost some of their anger or their timber. Temper. Right, Doug? Steph, you learned to put up with him, right? <laughs> Love is a wonderful thing. Greater is he that's in you and he that's in the world. Amen. He has overcome the world. Listen, this day and time, the reason the numbers are not here and the churches are not full and people are not standing around the side and praising God, it's not because of God, it's because of people. Amen. People have drifted away. They've listened to all the false accusations Oh, they may be thousands in some organization somewhere that praise or, or seems to praise the Lord, but who are they? They're not an opal that I can shake hands with. Oh, the TV's good. I can flip it on and off. I can watch what I want. Have you ever opened it up? You don't have to worry so much about seeing people naked anymore. Just turn the TV on. However, that came out. <laughs> Watch girls ball volleyball in the Olympics. Help us, Lord. Too many people justifying it. So, where are we are today? You see, when Moses brought the children out of Egypt, out of bondage. It crossed the Red Sea. Rolled back, crossed over on dry land. Man, how do I believe that? That's just amazing. I, I can't believe that. You know why? You don't believe that God is superior. That God is the great God of the universe. That God, through righteousness in Him, can do all things. 
But then we get a little bit weak about what we can do, or maybe even a lack of faith. But I tell you, without faith, you cannot please God. Without faith, you don't have it. Faith comes with works, works with faith. It all works together. I ask again, what do people believe? Black Lives Matter? White supremacist, Democrat, Republican, what do you believe? As for me and my house, we serve the Lord. As for me and my house, don't bring it in. No alcohol is allowed in my house. It's not there. It's been tried. <coughs> it, met its, it met its master then. You see, what do you really believe? Do you believe that God gave us his son Jesus? That we could have what will soon be a Passover here? That he said in the time of Moses, when they crossed the Red Sea, they were free out of Egypt. He declared a Passover time. A Passover time that would be in remembrance until this day, how that God set people free from their bondage. Sin is a bondage. The things that people do that they don't want to really do, one is addiction. It's a bondage. One is the voice of verbal, <laughs> vulgar language. It's a bondage. Cursing. Worshiping idols. Unknown gods. It's a bondage. My goodness, I'm free. I'm serving a God that cannot fail. This is the real thing. If you just think and see the moon, the stars, the very nightfall, the rain, God brought it all that we could see it, but we don't believe He's there. My, my. My, my. Moses seen the hinder parts of God, and now we see the hinder parts of people leaving all over, doing everything in the world except serving the Lord. Going everywhere except serving the Lord. I believe in family. I believe you ought to have a vacation. I believe you ought to enjoy your life. But do not neglect taking God with you when you go. Take God with you when you go. Don't leave him behind. I'm, uh, so Moses declared the Passover. You know, Joshua in chapter 7, when they passed over the river, uh, when they had taken over uh, the, the battle, when they would taken over the city, you know that was the last time that manna was ever sent from heaven? You can look it up. God fed Moses. God fed Joshua. He fed them with manna from heaven. And when they had taken over the city and came into the promised land, there was no more manna. You know where our manna is, don't you? Jesus Christ. He's our bread from heaven. He's our water of life. He is everything we have and what we need to live a successful Christian life. And I don't get why people are so miserable being Christians. I, God help me to understand why people can sit and moan and groan and not be happy in the spirit of God or never say anything. Thank God for them coming because sometimes they show me just what I don't want to be. <laughs> Help us, Lord. Boy, you're lucky. <laughs> but I don't use that word. I'll tell you, I'm really glad to see. You. See. You. Blessing to me. I was worried nobody would ever like you. <laughs> I can't have had to do it. We love you, Logan. Really, I'm all good. I'm a little bit. No, you see, she was a little tough, Logan. I've always loved you. <laughs> Help us not forget the power of God. Help us not forget the power of God that brings us together. Our unity, our love one toward another. Without love, we're nothing. He spoke about charity. It's described in the book of Colossians. Y'all got it. As the bond of perfection. There's a definition for it. 
the bond of perfection. That is fitting everything together to be perfect. We have this bond, this friendship, this love one toward another. And I've seen it, and probably all of you have, in the churches of life. I'm not going there because they're mad, they're arguing, they're not friendly. Look, we can't do it all, but we can give it our best move. I love God because He first loved me. And because He loved me, His Son died for me. Don't sidestep the crucifixion. But my, my, why can we not believe not only did He heal the sick, the lame to walk, the blind to see. Well, I just can't believe that story. Look, can you believe that He was buried? rose again the third day, ascended into the heavens, interceding for you and I. If you can't believe that, then get back down here somewhere and start believing it again from the beginning to the end that he created this heaven and earth. And because of man's sin, he gave us another way out of this world. And I can tell you there's two deaths. The first death is the natural death. The second death and there's two lives. It was mentioned this morning. Being born in the natural, being born in the spiritual. The time of the end shall come when we'll all stand before the judgment seat of Christ for the deeds we've done in the good or bad. And he will say this very thing, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Or enter into the joys of the Lord. That's the second day. Cast out into the lake of fire. We preach a little hotter than some. <laughs> I preach it a lot hotter than some. <laughs> I preach it not only down to the ashes, but Malachi said we would tread on the ashes of the wicked. And God said there'd be a new heaven and a new earth. All the other things is going to be passed away, destroyed. No more sickness, sorrow, or death. No more. Yeah, I preach it a little hot. I believe he's <laughs> going to destroy wickedness and evil from the very face of the earth to be no more. I'm not saying there's not going to be a punishment, but it's coming. And I think the hardest punishment in life is guilt. When you feel that guilt, when you feel that you've done wrong, when you're absolutely uh, guilty, it's like a life sentence. But man, when you feel free, ah, you can strut like a chicken. I tell you, when you get that freedom in your life and you can get up from that broken heart, when you can get up from that guilt, when you can ask God to forgive you and those sins are cast into the outer depths of the sea to be remembered no more and stand up high you're one of his. And if God be for you, who can be against you? Man, it feels good. I got, man, that feels good. So the Passover. Jesus even honored the Passover. That's what this represents today. Do this in remembrance of me until I come. Now there's one thing that we would ask as we serve this. I'm not condemning. I'm not judgmental. You're all welcome to stay and take part or just stay. But to take the Passover, you believe that this Passover is taken to represent Jesus Christ until he comes the second time. You eat of the manna, which is the unleavened bread, and you drink of the fruit of the vine which he is the fruit of the vine, and he bears fruit. That's what this is about. So as his last supper, and I'll tell you this, it may be one of ours, God forbid. It may not be tomorrow, but I believe there's some people that's taken this last supper for the last time, and maybe they could take it, but they just ain't been back. I'm so, I don't want to say tired or exhausted. I've heard so many excuses in life in the 40 years of church, of people backsliding, what they don't believe. And this one made me mad. Lord, if, if you've gone through your life without someone making you angry and sin not, at least the worst thing come up on you. Biblical. 
if you haven't maybe felt like neglected or they didn't love you, my goodness, what else they could be missing? There's got to be joy. There's got to be something greater than all this hatred. And it's the, it's the body of Christ. He's the head. And when we take this, we take this in remembrance of him. That he died, crucified, hung on a cross, buried, mistreated, beaten, scars, spear thrust in his side, blood, water, for us to be fortunate enough to come and sit down and enjoy the presence of the Lord. My, I'm so glad to just leave it out there. Come in and serve the Lord. You may have something on your mind, something to worry about, but one thing I do know is when you worship Him and you worship Him in spirit and truth, you'll feel better. When you can pray, you'll feel better. Where are we today? The last days. They're not coming. They're here. In the last days, my, my, People will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears turn away from the truth. Listen to everything coming and going. Why doesn't somebody just tell me the truth? Just tell me the truth and I'll be set free. Well, that's Jesus. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. And I tell you, there's an antichrist who denies the Son of Christ but they have a great religious body. There's a there's a, a, a belief that God blessed Mary, the mother of Jesus. Well, God did bless her. She's the mother of Jesus. She can't save me. It's Jesus who saves me. And after Joseph, after 12 years of age, you don't hear about Joseph anymore, the stepdad. You don't hear about him. But Mary was right there at the cross. When Jesus was crucified, she was right there. Why is that? I say, people come and go. People come and go. If you would, we're going to take on this communion. Now let me say this. We'll stand. We'll have a prayer. And uh, Bonnie, I want to say this. You're welcome to stay, honey. And even <coughs> better than that, if you want to come up and pray, I'm not picking on you. We'll be glad to pray with you. I love you. I love the work that you make the effort. Uh, if you need any help, get anything, and that's any of it, <coughs> on your heart, your mind at all, not just picking at you, think a lot of it. We kind of like Steph, too. she been around a while. <laughs> we want to have communion, okay? So let's all stand.